to us that we may grow rich in Jesus Christ. Our Old Testament lesson today takes place just as the children of Israel are preparing to go into the promised land. They were in Egypt. The Lord saved them from Egypt. They were in the wilderness for 40 years. The Lord was with them, provided that for them through that whole time. And now as they prepare to enter into the promised land, the Lord, is speaking through Moses, is again reminding them of all the things that he has said to them in the past, preparing for them to go in. And I'd like to reread just a few verses from chapter 8, where it says in verse 7, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey. A land where bread will not be scarce, and you will lack nothing. A land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. A land of capital that the Lord was giving to them. All that he was providing them and desiring for them to invest the capital that he was giving them to grow rich in him. But then, as we heard in the, the, most of the rest of the reading, was a warning. A warning that once they got into the promised land, once they started building their homes and establishing their families and eating well, not to forget the giver of the capital. Not to forget where everything is coming from. And not to put all their focus and all of their energy on the stuff. And seek to pursue only the stuff. Because they're warned in verse 17, You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. God not only provides the capital, he also provides the ability to produce wealth. And gives the indication, it's okay to produce wealth if it's for the right purpose. And especially the wealth, as we're hearing through this series of growing rich in Jesus Christ. The parable in today's gospel reading is a parable told by Jesus which is all about investing. There was a man who was going on a journey and he called three of his servants together and he provided them with capital, with resources, with talents. He gave one of them five, he gave another two, and he gave another one. And the text says, based on their ability. One person had the ability to handle more than the other person. So they had different abilities, abilities again that God had given them, and resources based on those abilities. But even though their abilities were different, they were all expected to invest. And they understood that. They understood that as their master went away, he was going to come back and he was going to want to return on the investment that he had made desiring them to invest. And so he goes away and so we're told that the first two did put the, the resources that they were given, given the, the capital they were given, put it to work and doubled what they had. And the third one who had won was afraid was afraid of the master, was afraid of failure, and thought, the last thing I want to do is lose this. So he went off and buried it. So he could give back to the master exactly what he had been given. The master comes back. He brings forward the first two, and his response to them is, well done, good and faithful servant. Then the third one is brought forward. And he says, I was afraid of you. So I buried it. 
here's your talent back. And it's very interesting because the bad guy in this parable is the one who buried the talent. Because he didn't invest, which was expected. And the master said the least you could have done was put it in the bank to earn a little interest. But you didn't even do that. He did nothing. And that's what the person is condemned for. Because he did nothing. He buried. He did not invest. And so the, the Lord is, is calling him to invest. And the importance of making that investment. I mentioned last week, our Lord Jesus Christ has invested in us. A great deal. We just recently, a few weeks ago, celebrated the fact that our God came down on this earth in the person of Jesus Christ, investing in us as he gave his life for us. He lived for us. He died for us. He rose from the dead. He is the one who calls us into the kingdom. He is the one who gives us our identities. He is the one who calls us to be fellow servants he's the in his kingdom he is the one who blesses us with salvation with life with forgiveness with he's the one who who promises us all things and he calls us then as he calls us into his kingdom as he invests in us as he gives us capital he calls us to invest and to grow rich in jesus christ so what is that capital that the Lord gives us? What do we have to invest? Once again this week we have the insert in the bulletin that has pursuing the good life. And on this insert are the five capitals. And just want to go through these briefly, the five capitals. You know, the one we fully understand, the one at the bottom is financial capital. We, we understand that one really clearly in regards to, yep, you have money, you invest it, it earns more money, or you buy things, you buy property, real estate, and it goes up in, in value. And so the first capital, financial capital, is, is all of those, those, all the stuff, the treasures. And what's the currency? It's cash. Cash is the currency. Intellectual capital is creativity and knowledge. It's and the currency of that is, is concepts and ideas and figuring things out and figuring how things need to be done and accomplished. Physical capital is time and energy. And the currency of that is ours and our health. The time that we have to, to, to do something or, or the abilities we have because of the health that we have to be able to accomplish things. Relational capital is our family and our friends. It's investing in people and growing in relationship. And spiritual capital is growing in a deeper relationship with our Lord and with Jesus Christ. And the currency of that is wisdom and power. That the Lord calls us as we went through our summer series to grow in the character of Jesus Christ. And to grow in the competency of Jesus Christ as we live in his kingdom. And using wisdom and power for the furthering of the kingdom. How do we invest these things? Well, just a brief example is, you know, if we need more financial capital, we use our physical capital, our time, and we work. We get a job. And we make financial capital. If we want to have a, a better job, we'll take some of our financial capital and invest it in going to trade school or college in order to earn more, or gain more capital of intelligence, of wisdom, and to be able to get a better job. We invest in relationships. We use our physical capital, maybe even our financial capital as we invest in our relationships with other people. We take someone out to dinner. We spend time with them. 
And the investment is when we grow in our relational capital with people and we, and we build up that capital. When something happens in our lives, when we are in need of help, all of a sudden we're surrounded by those people that we have invested in who are there to help us and be there for us. And when we don't invest in that capital, when we don't invest in those relationships, when we stay hidden in our homes and we don't have friendships and we don't have contact with our family, something happens to us, nobody knows about it. Nobody's there. And so the importance of that investing. Now, if you notice, these are in order of importance, and the one at the top is the most important. Spiritual capital. And all the rest of the capitals are to be used in order to grow in spiritual capital. To have it in the proper order. To grow rich in Jesus Christ. To grow in our relationship with the Lord. To grow in in wisdom and knowledge and power. To be used by the Lord for the blessing of others. So all these capitals God gives to us and provides for us And then he calls us to invest. And what's the purpose? And what's the point? So that the capitals grow. He wants us to pursue the good life. And he wants the capital to grow. For what purpose? For ourselves only? No. But not just for ourselves and not just for our families, but also for others. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. Faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. God's grace in its various types of capital. It's the purpose we've been called into the kingdom. God has invested in us and he calls us to be stewards. He calls us to be managers of all the capital that he gives to us for the sake of others. For the sake of helping those out when they need financial help. For the sake of helping people out when they need someone to spend time with them. Helping people out as we grow in spiritual capital so that we can share the wisdom the power of God with others. So as we go through this series, it's a time for us to self-evaluate. And today the question is, how am I investing? And what are the priorities as I invest? And as I take a look at these capitals that the Lord gives to me, am I investing them? Or am I burying them? That's the question of the parable. How am I using the resources of of time? How am I using my knowledge? How am I using my spiritual capital? Am I in using it? Am I investing it in others? Am I investing it so that it grows? Or am I just burying it and doing it? Nothing. Sometimes we don't like doing self-evaluation. We don't like doing that. But it's important for us to do that. It's important for us to think about how am I managing what God gives me? Because the truth is, just as Jesus or just as the Lord was there with with the children of Israel as they're preparing to go into the promised land, the Lord was the one who was providing them with everything. And everything we are and everything we have comes from the Lord. He is invested heavily into us. And he desires for us to grow in the good life and to pursue the good life as we are part of his kingdom And not just for ourselves. And it's not about pursuing the good life so that I may be rich, I may be famous, I may be noteworthy. No. It's about serving in God's kingdom and pursuing the good life. 
for the sake of others as we grow rich in Christ so that we may be a rich blessing to others. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.